Hey, welcome to another Flare Court Media thing. Uh, I am currently on the Nebraska State Capitol up on the uh, observation deck, and behind me is uh, the city of Lincoln uh, looking east. And uh, I thought I would come up here and show you what I keep in my camera bag as of January um, 2019. Uh, I actually filmed this video once sitting in the comfort of my own house, and I, as I was editing it, I was like, God, this is boring. <laughs> so I thought it'd be a lot more fun to come to the Capitol. I only have a, uh, about 45 minutes left before they lock me out. Uh, come to the Capitol and show you all the gear in my bag, and instead of just showing you, hey, look at this camera, I'd use the uh, gear and film something here in the Capitol. So uh, let's get started, I guess. First up, uh, I use a low pro camera bag, and as you can see as I keep flipping it around, it's a really nice camera for um, carrying a lot of stuff on the go when you don't have room to set stuff down. I'll give you kind of, kind of squeezed in here. But yeah, so uh, it has a clasp that can come around from the back side and really lock it on. It's a nice, nice hiking or day bag. But you can flip it around, and the beauty of this Lots of class, that's not the beauty. The beauty is you can then unfold it and all your stuff doesn't go falling out. So you can just kind of lock it down and get the pieces you want. It is configurable. You can uh, move these pouches around as much as you want. Has a built-in cleaning cloth. Lock this up before I flip it around and drop something. Over here has a built-in rain fly, so you can cover the entire bag with waterproofing. Uh, has pockets up here. I'm not going to show you all the little doodads and bobbers I keep. I don't have anything really special. Chargers and, and that's about the most of it. And uh, another one. Let's see here. So the first thing in here is uh, what I was using last year as well. Uh, the Canon 70D DSLR camera. It has um, the 18 to 135 millimeter lens. So, you have a little bit of telescopic. Uh, it was the kit lens that came with it, but I actually enjoy uh, kit lenses and I enjoy this uh, because I don't want to be locked down. Um, I'm the type of uh, photographer or videographer, I do more video nowadays, that uh, I, I don't want to stop and change things or set up shots. I kind of want to shoot on the fly. And so, having zoom capabilities uh, makes makes things better. I may not get the same shallow depth of field as uh, like a, a prime lens or something, but I, I'd rather have this. So that's usually on there. So I do also have uh, a prime lens. Now prime lens, if you're not familiar, uh, has no telescopic zoom. It's locked at the uh, focal depth. So this one is a 50 mil. And this does allow me to get some more shallow depth of field. It's a uh, f1.8. One of the nice things I like about this camera is it has a fully articulating screen. Uh, it was built um, for video, uh, with video in mind, as the first camera. I'm getting a phone call. Decline. <laughs> it was the first camera that had the dual pixel autofocus. Uh, so it. it has a really good autofocus system. You can flip it around and see yourself. So let's take a look at what uh, the video quality out of the Canon looks like. Okay, so I have the uh, video recording on auto there. Um, it's not really a vlogging camera, but it does have a microphone input jack on the side there. But so yeah, I uh, figured let's just take a look here. Yeah, the autofocus. I don't know if I have it on auto. I have it on manual focus. So there's that. Let's point at something a little closer. Uh, yeah, it does only shoot in um, 1080p, but for me, you know, that's okay because Canon hasn't actually released um, an affordable 4K solution in, in a DSLR. All of their 4Ks are really expensive, and my budget for a camera usually is about 800 or less. 
uh, and this is still doing just fine and scaling it. The image quality is good, scaling it up to 4K. You really can't tell the difference compared to uh, some of the other cameras I have. Even though they are 4K, the image sensors are smaller, so you're kind of scaling anyway. But uh, yeah, right now it's got a nice lock on my face, so good low camera. I bring this with me a lot. While I'm out here, I figured I'll show you my other zoom camera. So keep that guy wrapped up in here because last times I just carry this out by itself. This is the Canon SX740HS. So uh, you may remember last time, last year at this time, I had a Nikon A900, I think, which had a telephoto lens and shot in 4K. I really liked that camera. Uh, the autofocus was good. Um, dark shooting was pretty good. I took it to Seattle and had uh, some really good shots. I just brought my phone, the uh, Nikon. Golly, that's annoying. And uh, the phone and the Nikon, and uh, that's how I shot the entire trip. As you may remember, last January, uh, I fell in a lake in water um, and had some forced obsolescence because I broke my Nikon, I fell and hit it on the uh, ice and broke the lens, and I also broke my drone, or at least all the drone batteries. So after uh, that, I went out and thought, well, maybe I could buy the same thing, but curiosity had me, so I tried the Panasonic, um, I'll insert the model right here. And I hate that camera. That camera is absolute garbage. It may be good for shooting pictures, um, but all the settings, the settings are so hard to know. You, Some settings are hidden, some settings you can't turn on unless you turn on other settings. It's really, really complicated, and the autofocus sucks. It was not made for video. I took that camera to South Dakota and ruined a lot of shots with it. Uh, even in the last Pierre episode, I had it pointed at my face, zoomed in, and it kept losing focus on me. And I'm like, you're literally sitting on a tripod, staring at the same thing, my mug, the entire time, and you're out of focus. Uh, and that's, point and shoots are not supposed to do that. So that is getting sold, um, but I went out and saw that Sony was releasing a new 4K camera. Uh, so I almost, almost picked that up, a uh, point and shoot, because I had a Sony years ago, but um, it can only shoot 4K for five minutes before it overheats, and that's not acceptable to me for the way I shoot. I like to, you know, just do long, long takes and cut it out later. So that was an option, but then I realized while searching at that, that Canon, I missed them releasing this, Canon released this 4K capable point and shoot. Uh, and it's a 40 times zoom, which was a higher zoom than all the others, I think. So look at that baby go. Woo. I love this camera. The focus, this is made for video. Uh, the Panasonic probably made for photos better, but this thing was made for video. The autofocus on this is rock solid. Some people complain that the 4K is a little soft, but you know, it, it's a point and shoot. What are you, what are you expecting? Um, awesome camera. If you need a point and shoot to supplement, let's say you're just taking out your phone and one other camera, uh, if you want to supplement it, uh, just bring this. Uh, I can get by with my phone, this, and my drone and shoot just about anything I want because even if I can't physically get close to the object I want to be at, between this and the drone and then the high quality on my Pixel 3, which we'll talk about in a second, I can get all the shots I want. So let's take a look at the quality from this. There. It has me locked, so hopefully as I come in and out, it's going to stay in focus. I uh, saw I'm talking so fast, I've lost stuff to get through, and like I said, uh, not a whole lot of time to do it. So let's try out the zoom out here. Let's find something really far away. So there's a water tower way off it, straight ahead. You can't see it right now, but let's zoom out and see if we can, we can grab it. See, so look how that stays in focus. It's nice and quiet. Uh, smooth, not jerky. The image stabilization could be a little better, uh, but it's, you know, it's all right. So that's, whoop. So that is four to 40 times optical zoom. And then of course it has digital zoom. So we can go into 64, 80, 100, 128. We can almost read those words. 160 times. That's maximum zoom right there. So, but that's digital, so we'll zoom back out. Nice and smooth, I really like it. And that's how far away we are. Look at that, that's crazy. So this camera, no, there's no 
microphone input jacks, um, but I don't need that for the type of stuff I do. I do have a lapel mic, which we'll talk about in a second. So if I really want nice, clean audio, I can record into that. But otherwise, awesome camera, highly recommend it. All right, so I came into the rotunda, so pardon the echo. And it's also really, it's cloudy outside, so it's pretty dark. But I came in here for the next camera because it's a 360 camera. And it'll be especially interesting to try it in the, in the dim light. Uh, I have the Insta360 360, 360 camera. I also have the GoPro Fusion, uh, which is waterproof and I used on the um, Life Straw video on my kayak. But the, the video editing procedure is really hard. Um, well, here, let me get the other camera out and then we'll talk. Boop. That's the sound effect of the day. Boop. So, um, yeah, we'll just boot, boot that little guy up right there. It is a 360 camera, so there's lenses on both sides. So you can record all around you all at once without having to move the camera around. I'm sorry, that's out of focus. Uh, but let's let's power it up and uh, switch to it. So this is the 360 camera. Normally you have a, a nice tripod or a monopod um, down here, so that way your hand's not in the shot, because I'm sure right now uh, you can see my hand. Um, I'm going to, in post-processing, take this into a normal um, rectangular video, so you may not notice, but the beauty of these is I could put it on a tripod and be in a space like this and walk around the space with the camera sitting there. And then afterwards, I can come back in post-processing and using my phone, just like a viewfinder in a virtual camera, I can look around at what I'm talking about and the, and the camera can just sit right there. And so it's going to, since I don't have a camera person, I can come here and be like, look at this plaque. And then walk over here, look at this. And the whole time the camera's not moving. Uh, obviously right now, I can't demonstrate that because I don't have a tripod. You just wouldn't have to imagine. But as I was saying, I have the GoPro Fusion as well, but Android, um, you can't share the videos very well. This thing has a lot more uh, automatic type shots, great for Instagram and stuff like that, or posting to Facebook. Um, this thing can only post a three, or sorry, the Fusion can only post on Android to uh, Facebook. Uh, this has live streaming capabilities, so I could set this out and, and stream a live video and everything. So that's why I picked this up. This has a lot more functionality with my setup. So I bring this with me and bring the Fusion when I know I need something rugged or waterproof. got off on the third floor, not the second floor. Uh, and this is the perfect spot to show you the next camera I always bring with me. That is the GoPro Hero 7 Black. I did have the GoPro 4 last time you saw me a year ago. Uh, I needed that for my drone. And I skipped the five and six. But uh, this, I, I couldn't pass it up after shooting the uh, Warrior Dash video where I had the GoPro Hero 4 on my head and how jerky and shaky that is. It's horrible to watch. Uh, I tried stabilizing it. It just looked terrible. And uh, so I want to keep doing those type of videos. And with the Hero 7 Black, they released uh, Hyper Smooth or something. And boy, <laughs> is it smooth. Um, this thing, it really, really corrects a lot of the shake and everything. So we'll, I'll show you here as I go down, go down these stairs. But I also want to show you the image quality up here real fast. So. Let's fire this sucker up. All right, so here's the GoPro Hero 7 Black's footage. Uh, it has auto uh, low light turned on because I've been on 60 frames per second, so it's trying to, because I'm on 60 frames per second, there's not as much light that gets to the sensor because it's taking a photo, uh, a, a, a frame much faster, so it's trying to edit that out. I also have the stabilization turned on, so it should be a hyper smooth video. But let's go out here and show you out this. Check that out. Now it is on wide field of view. You can't uh, lower on 4K, make it a smaller field of view. So in editing, you do have to kind of come and remove this fisheye, but um, <laughs> yeah. So this is the Nebraska State Capitol. <laughs> so let's go down these stairs and we'll see how smooth it is. I'm kind of bouncing extra hard to try and really show you how how much this works. 
Now I'm running. <laughs> so if we come flying down here. So hopefully that gave you a feel for how good the image smoothing is. Step back into the light. Yeah, here's some of those busts I was talking about. This is actually a great place for me to show you my next camera. Next year, I plan not to buy um, hardly any new equipment. Uh, 2018 was the year of buying all the stuff I needed to shoot all the things that I really want to shoot. There's not a whole lot more I need. I got everything I need. And so my goal for 2019 is to actually use all of this stuff to its fullest, learn all the settings, learn all the tricks, and actually get out and do things with it. Let me show you the final camera. And this thing is just so cool. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket. And it's actually a mini gimbal. I think it's almost the same size as uh, the DJI Spark camera. All right, so if we fire this up, just hold that down. Goes through its calibration. But it actually has a little screen and everything. It shoots in 4K. And you can um, flip it around to whoop, flip it around to selfie mode. And uh, there I am. It is a really tight field of view, which kind of sucks. Uh, so you have to hold at arm's length um, in order to get yourself in frame. Um, they are releasing uh, different adapters so you can put it on like a tripod stand or something. All right, so I'm recording from the DJI Osmo Pocket. Uh, this is the audio and everything from that. But I have it in a follow mode, so let me pull up the phone here. As I turn this, the gimbal is actually focusing on my face. Uh, it has also other modes. It has first person view, so that's where I pointed at something and as I move it smooths out my shaky hands and then it also has um, tilt locked so that just means uh, it only moves if I use the touch screen and tell it to move. So let's flip around the camera here. You can just do it with a three press on this button. Boop. So right now I have it in uh, the mode that I've been using in the most. It's um, first person view. So I'm moving the camera where I want it to go, but it's smoothing out my motions so that it's not really jerky or, or shaky. As I just whip around, see, that was a nice smooth move, but I'm really whipping the camera around fast. So really you just kind of point out what you want and it makes it uh, a study cam. First person mode is really cool. Uh, the only thing I wish they did with this camera, the only thing I wish they did with this camera is um, put a tripod mount on the bottom. That was kind of silly that they didn't include that. One thing I forgot to mention is that this, uh, you can get a USB-C or lightning cable. You take it out, you flip it around, and then it can plug into the back of your phone. And you can get um, a few more settings uh, by plugging it into the end of your phone. And you can actually keep it attached to your phone and look around and do things. And then you can use a um, up, down, left, right joystick, virtual joystick on your phone to uh, control the gimbal as well. Anyway, so that's this camera. Okay, so I pulled out the uh, Insta360 one more time because it's a little brighter down here. Um, first, I'll show you real fast here. There's the, uh, the Congress there. Or Senate, I guess it's Senate, not Congress, I don't know. But uh, we'll come out here. Let me get my fingers out of the way. And this is the mezzanine then. I hope to do a uh, documentary about this. I've been writing it for quite a while. I have lots of notes and books and everything that I've been trying to piece together a cohesive story. So hopefully, eventually I'll have time and uh, skill enough to put together a documentary about this wonderful, cool building. I just wanted to show you this um, on the 360 in a brighter light. So the final camera I use when I'm out in the field is uh, the one I'm talking to you on right now. Sorry, I'm looking at myself instead of you. Uh, it's um, my Pixel 3 XL. Uh, I've had the last three Pixel phones, Pixel 1, 2, and 3. I used to be a Note guy, a Samsung Note guy, but when uh, the Note 7 blew up, I had to find a new line of phones. So I picked the uh, Pixel line. And it's going to be really hard for me to get away from it um, because the cameras are always amazing. 
uh, but my whole workflow kind of centers around it because I use Google Photos a lot and the pixel line actually lets you upload full resolution uh, videos and images to Google Photos um, so I don't really have time to edit photos all that much so I throw every camera I take a picture on goes onto my phone and then I if it's something I'm interested in, I try and edit it in Google Photos. And if it looks good in Google Photos, boom, it goes out. Otherwise, then I'll download it and tweak in Photoshop or Affinity Photo. It's a free backup system of full, high-quality photos. And so that is such a valuable part of my uh, workflow that it would be really, really hard for me to uh, switch back. Um, but to every camera back here, any photo I take, I copy it to my phone and gets uploaded. It's a little hack. Uh, there's your tip for the day. Um, the Pixel 3 doesn't uh, know any di doesn't know the difference between pictures taken by the actual phone or pictures you upload. It'll upload everything. <laughs> so the Pixel line also has that super res zoom. It only works on photos, but uh, as we test it, it does a really good job for a digital camera. And one of the cool things is it has two levels of zoom on the front screen. Uh, one more camera to look at. Uh, I thought this was my last one. One more, but we have to get away from here because this is government property. So to show you my other camera, I have to go out into the country a little bit. Anyway, I came out here to Pioneers Park to show you uh, my last couple cameras. So this guy right here is my main camera. Shush. This is my main camera uh, that I normally shoot all of my A-roll with. Uh, so when I'm, I'm uh, at home talking face to face with the camera, this is the camera that I'm using. Uh, right now I have the microphone on top unplugged so you can actually hear the audio out of the camera. I used to use this as my backup audio for everything uh, because I didn't trust the other stuff I had. So. It's a wonderful camera. Uh, like I said, FDR AX53. You can plug in a hard drive and record directly to that. It has, um, using that, uh, has a uh, you know, microphone in. That's the end of optical. All the way into digital. <laughs> I'm one of the few people that actually uses a video camcorder for my video recording. Imagine that most people that I see on YouTube, they all have uh, DSLRs or mirrorless cameras. And this guy does a wonderful job. It doesn't give quite as shallow of a depth of field because I can't put on different lenses, but um, for what I shoot, this does great. Uh, They've released a newer model, but um, this shoots 4K non-stop. Uh, battery life's great, you can run it while it's plugged in. This is gonna segue perfectly into audio. So let me stop the recording, because I don't know if I can plug in the microphone while it's recording. All right, so now you should be hearing me from the Rode Microphone, I think is what it's called. It's the, the little mini by, by Rode. Oh, Rode Video Micro. It's a shotgun microphone about this long, doesn't have any battery power or anything. It's a good uh, thing. When I'm not using a lapel mic, I use this, and uh, the quality is really good. But let me show you the rest of my, my audio that I normally use. So as you remember from last year, I had the Zoom H5. Uh, handy little recorder. Um, actually, it is a handy recorder. <laughs> Uh, you can plug in uh, XLRs, you can plug in normal quarter, mil quarter inch microphone jacks. This top piece, you can replace these capsules with shotguns or cardioid, whatever. All kinds of things. Great, I used to put this on top of my camera. Because it actually has a, uh, a mount, so I, ha I used to put that on top of the uh, Sony that you just saw or I'd put it on like a microphone stand or something. But uh, Zoom actually just released this year something smaller that's a little more convenient. They were just released this year the F1 field recorder and this meets my needs really well because it comes in two flavors. Um, comes in a, 
You can buy it as a lapel system or as a on top of your camera system. And fortunately, they sell the um, different pieces. So you can buy it as a shotgun system uh, that goes on top of your camera, or you can buy it as the lapel and then buy the missing piece. So that's what I did. So down here, you can plug in the, the lapel. So I've been trying to use this a lot more. I'm still getting used to the settings. So some of my, my most recent videos sound a little wonky, but uh, I'm just that's just because I'm getting used to the settings. And then here is the uh, thing that goes on top of your camera, and that way you don't get uh, shocks and bumps. <laughs> just like the big one, you can plug a capsule in. Hard to do with one hand. And then you'd put that on there and a lot smaller profile to put on top of your camera. So I've been using this a lot. So the final camera in my uh, setup is my drone. Uh, another forced obsolescence thing. This is what my drone used to be. It uh, was the 3DR Solo. <laughs> it was touted as being really cool. It's supposed to have all these kind of awesome type of GPS features and help help you fly. Um, this went into the frozen lake with me and all the batteries got ruined. There's a Chinese company out there that is making replacements now because the company's out of business. But uh, I bought my new drone before the Chinese company started making replacements. So I could resurrect this. Um, it handles really well in the wind, but it's huge. <laughs> and it takes a long time because you have to put on the propellers every time you want to fly it. It takes a long time for the GPS to lock on. You have to use a GoPro Hero 4 Black, um, and the controller is huge. So this uh, this is done. Let me show you what it's been replaced with. <laughs> the uh, DJI Mavic Air. So I took this to South Dakota. So some of the uh, drone shots you've been seeing is coming from this. Let me just show you the comparison here. I mean, <laughs> this could like ride on the top of it, piggyback style. Anyway, I'm so glad I went with uh, um, mainstream co mainstream company, the DJI company. Uh, this thing's great. Really small, compact. The features are awesome. I love it. I, I highly recommend the Mavic Air. Uh, and I'm actually near an airport, so I'm going to fly this real fast, but I'm going to keep it uh, down below the trees here. So, so the planes shouldn't come nearby. And the beauty about this thing is it has sensors on the front, back, bottom. The only thing it doesn't have is sensors on the side, which in the South Dakota video, I was flying it sideways and crashed it into a rock and broke it. So <laughs> I had to use one of the insurance claims and get a replacement. Uh, so don't fly sideways, but you just use your phone. And I, I don't, I didn't connect the joysticks, but here we go. Coming on back. But you can see how this carrying case compared to it fits down into this little thing without all the batteries and stuff. How this is <laughs> this is a lot better than this. So plan to take this hiking and backpacking a lot this year. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing the camera equipment I've been using over the past year and what I plan to continue using for the uh, 2019 probably. I guess that's about it. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It helps other people find the video. It really, really does. And uh, subscribe so you don't miss out on any more of these tech videos um, or the, the travel vlogs. And until next time, I'm doing what I love. Keep doing what you love. Thanks for watching.